Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here. In this video, I'm going to give a basic introduction to the transport equation, which is a first order PDE used in modeling. Now, this video forms part of a series on the transport equation. And uh, my plan is to derive and solve some basic forms of the transport equation. Uh, and the discussion of the derivation will shed light on how other partial differential equations naturally arise. And the solution methods that we'll look at will hint at how the more, uh, more difficult or more general uh, PDE partial differential equations might be solved. Now this particular video deals with just the solution to a basic form of the transport equation, and in particular the transport equation that we're going to look at will be homogeneous. Now things like uh, examples and um, more difficult problems will be looked at in other videos. So what is the transport equation? Well here are some forms. The most basic form is the following. Okay, here we've, we look for a function of two variables, u of, uh, is a function of x and t, so think of x as position as, and t as time, and c is a constant here. So the, there's a zero on the right hand side, so this is the basic homogeneous form of the simple transport equation. Okay, and if we sort of look at increasing the complexity of the transport equation, well, this is one where we have functions rho and q, rho uh, that both depend on position and time. Here we move into um, the situation where u depends on x, y, and z, and time. And c, uh, this c arrow is a, is a constant vector, and the dot product um, is present. And this nabla is just the gradient of the uh, solution u. And you can write it, say, as an ordered triple like this, where, they, of course, the subscripts all, all throughout here uh, mean uh, di partial differentiation. So u sub x means du dx. And here is an inhomogeneous uh, version of the previous equation. But the PD that we're going to be interested in in this presentation is very simple. It's just going to be this box PD where c is a constant. Now, in particular, we are going to look to solve this basic form via an application of directional derivatives. Now, directional derivatives, just to refresh everyone's memory, are seen in a third course in calculus when you start looking at vector calculus. Okay? And um, we look for functions of two variables whose partial derivatives satisfy uh, the given PDE. Now, like I said before, the directional derivative of u in a direction of a given vector v is denoted by this, and it's just the dot product of a unit vector in the direction of v with the gradient of u. Now in this case, in this context, the gradient is just u sub x comma u sub t. And like I said before, v hat is a unit vector in the direction of a given vector v. Now, the directional derivative is just a generalization of a partial derivative. Okay, now in particular, and this is something that we're going to use in our uh, solution method, if the directional derivative of a function u 
in the direction of a vector v at all, is zero at all points, then u is constant along all lines that are tangential to the vector v. Okay? Now this, this is kind of familiar from just a, a first course in calculus. You know if a function has a zero derivative everywhere, then that function must be a constant. Okay? It's the same principle here for this directional derivative. Now we're going to exploit that to solve our transport equation. Okay, so this is the most important thing that I've mentioned so far, this, this concept here. So what we're going to do is factorise this left-hand side into a dot product and use the uh, homogeneity of the equation to show that this, this holds for a certain v or v hat. Okay, so let's factor, if you like, our the left-hand side of our transport equation into a dot product form. Okay, so if you think of expanding this, you'll re readily verify that you'll get this middle expression. And this is almost a dot product. Uh, sorry, sorry, this is almost a directional derivative. It's not quite there yet, though. Okay, why? Because because this vector here may not have uh, length 1. Okay, so how can we put that in? Well, I can just multiply both sides by 1 divided by the length of this, this vector c, 1. And I'm not changing, changing it at all. Okay, so the length of a vector c, 1 is just this. Okay, this is the gradient. So this is now the directional derivative of u in the direction of the vector c, 1. And we know that the directional derivative is 0. What does this mean? It means that every solution to our transport equation u must be constant along the lines that are tangential to this vector c, 1. Okay, now because we're, we're, we're going to have straight lines here, okay, this is, this is a, a constant vector, so the lines that are tangential to them are going to be straight lines. Okay, in this case, the, the lines in question are also parallel to the, the vector c, 1. So let me draw a little picture and uh, show you what I mean. Okay, so let me draw in the, uh, the say, the, the constant vector c1, c, 1. And let's draw in all the lines that are tangential, in this case parallel, to this vector. Okay, so, every, so think of this as the domain of our solution, u. Okay, along each of these lines, u, the solution u, takes on one and only one value, a constant value. So along this line, you will take, well, you will not change. It will take on one um, value. On this line, you will not change. It will take on possibly another constant value. This one, this one, this one, etc. Okay. Now, the equations for these lines are pretty easy to work out because we know the slope of the line. Okay, because we know in uh, in, in examples that uh, we know what c is. Okay, so. Lines parallel and tangential to this vector have slope in the xt plane given by this. So, and just to make it a bit simpler, I've just rearranged it. And you can integrate this and uh, form the following. Where k is a constant of integration. And if I take the, I want to isolate the k, then I have this form here. Okay, so 
So each of these lines can be, uh, or of this form for you know different different values of k. Now along each of these lines, the solution to our transport equation is constant. That is, u only depends on x minus t. So what does that mean? The solution u depends on x minus ct. What that means is that our solution is a function of x minus ct. Okay, so this then is the general solution to our PDE u sub t plus c u sub x equals zero, our transport equation. So what is f? Well, f is an arbitrary function, arbitrary but differentiable function. Okay, so with PDE, there aren't sort of constants of, in of integration in our in, in the solutions like you would you see in ODEs. The situation is more general here. So we have a a function of integration, if you like, or a general function that plays a similar role to a constant of integration. Now, if you use the chain rule, differentiate this to get these partial derivatives, you, you'll see that this does indeed satisfy this equation. Okay. Let me explain this form a little bit more though. Take a particular value of, of k up here, say k1, and consider one of these lines to be k1. Uh, sorry, uh, k1 and one, and one of these lines to be the lines that we're talking about. Okay, x minus ct equals k1. Now along this line, u is a constant. Okay, it doesn't change. And call the value of that constant f of k sub 1. Hence, u is f of k sub 1 equals f of x minus ct. So this kind of explains the form of our solution. Okay, so we've derived the solution using this nice directional derivative approach. There are other ways to solve this problem. For example, using the method of characteristics. Okay. So if, you, if you're familiar, familiar with that met method, then each of these lines is called a characteristic curve or a characteristic line associated with our, our PDE. But I, you know, I like the application of directional derivatives for this particular problem because it, so, it sort of ties back to vector calculus and, and shows you a nice application. Now in other videos, I'm going to do examples of solving particular transport equations and I'll also solve the inhomogeneous or the non-homogeneous form of the transport equation. So for example, example, instead of having zero there you have an f depending on say x and t. That's a subject of another video. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this useful and um, look out for my next video on the transport equation.